Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today is another exciting day. We have Android P, and we also have the latest August security updates for our Nexus devices here. All the ones that are still supported at least, so just the 6P and 5X. So today we're going to be updating our phone to the August security update running Android Oreo. And uh, we'll just have to go through a few things before we start. And I guess the most important thing is that we won't be getting any more security updates after November 2018, which is, to my calculations, two months away. Okay, sorry, three months away, and we won't be getting any more security updates. But I guess that is probably the best time to have a look at uh, which custom ROMs are best suited for long-term use. And there's already a couple in mind, one notably Lineage OS, but we can talk about that later. Today we're going to be updating our phone to the August security update and to do that we need to do a few things on our phones. Now we don't have to remove our screen lock hopefully, TWRP can still decrypt our data, but one thing we do have to do is remove uh, our substratum overlays or at least disable them just so we can update without any issues. So we're going to go over to the substratum app, go over to the manager, uh, check everything and then just disable or uninstall the selected overlays. If you have a pretty good idea that they're going to be working again after we update, then you can just disable them and they should all turn orange like that. I know it looks kind of red on camera, but it is orange. And once you've done that, we can go ahead with the updating process, which involves downloading a few things. So first up, we want to download is the latest SDK platform tools. Now this is just ADB and Fastboot, these programs that are used to communicate with your device in its various states. And just download the one that's right for your operating system. As usual, I'll have kind of an infographic on how to use the executables that they give you per operating system. It is a little bit different on the Mac, the Linux, and PowerShell, as I'll be using the command prompt. And down here under the revisions title, you can actually see when the last update to the platform tools was made. So if you've downloaded the platform tools after June of 2018, then you probably don't need to download it again, and you can just find the old one that you've downloaded. But it's very important to keep this up to date, or you may run into issues, as we had a few problems that were solved just by using the latest version of the platform tools. Now it's great to download them straight from Google, uh, if possible. Next up, we want to download the latest factory image for our 6P. I guess the same thing for the 5X. So just go down, scroll down until we see 8.1 August, and if there is a special build for your carrier, such as TELUS or Telstra or T-Mobile, whatever it may be, uh, download the one that's most suitable for your device or slash carrier. So there's only one option here for the 6P, so I'm just going to click on the blue download link right here, and that'll download the factory image. Now if we have a look quickly for the 5X, uh, this also has just one version to go around. So just download the one for your device. Next up, we'll also want to download or make sure that we have the latest version of the TWRP custom recovery. This one is for the 6P, same goes for the 5X as well. They are probably also on version 3.2.3-0. So download this image and click on the larger blue download text or link here. And once you have that downloaded, there are a few more things that we can download and that is the latest Magisk Beta flashable zip. This is just so we can reroute our device once we flash the stock images on top of the ones that we've pretty much modified with Magisk, and just hit the orange download link there. And last but not least, if your phone is suffering from the boot loop of death, uh, you can definitely download the patched boot image that I have uploaded here. I just finished uploading it for the latest August security update. Now this is only for the 6P, I haven't made any for the 5X, but if you want to, let me know down below and I can make one uh, real quick. Otherwise, you can actually use the one from Osmosis's basket build. So if we just quickly go here, you can download the patch TWRP, uh, which is important if you're going to do it this way. So if you don't want to flash the patched boot image and you need the recovery mode as well to be patched, of course to flash Magisk, uh, come over here and download the patched um, TWRP image for your device. So either 6P or 5X, angle or bullhead, and also download the Nexus 5X 6P Blue loop of death workaround injector with his any kernel 2 zip file. Download this and when you flash this in TWRP, it will actually patch the recovery image and boot images for you uh, exactly the same way that we have done over here, but just in a, I guess a more convenient and portable fashion. So I'll leave these links down below in the more info as well, as well as timestamps throughout the whole video. 
So once you have these six or five files downloaded, I should say just five, uh, we have the factory image, our optional four core boot image, the latest Magisk beta, the uh, flashable zip file, the latest platform tools from Google, and the latest version of the TWRP custom recovery, or optionally, the patched one from Osmosis's basket build. So whichever version uh, you want to use. But once you've done that, we can go ahead and start extracting a few files to get started. First up will be the platform tools zip file. Now if you already have extracted these files somewhere and you've even added them to the path environment variable, as long as they are up to date, you can just use the ones that you've already used before. But if things don't work out, you might want to try using the ones that you've just freshly downloaded instead. So of course we're going to extract the ADB EXE, the two DLLs underneath, the fastboot EXE, the libwimp thread-1 DLL, and the make2fs or 2fs exe and configuration files like so just drag those outside here and we should start getting a lot of files over there and we can close the platform tools zip file the next thing we want to open up is the factory image so let's just quickly do that then go into the folder and we just want to extract the bootloader and radio images outside and I think we'll just extract the um, image zip file as well. We won't go open it up and try extracting the individual files uh, because I'm running out of space here, viewable space, but uh, I guess this won't hurt either. So once you've extracted those three files, we can close the factory image. And the next thing we want to do is to copy the latest version of the Magisk beta zip file that we just downloaded to our phone. Now if you already have it on your phone, you of course you don't need to copy it over again, but if you're not sure, you know, there's no harm in doing so. So I'm just going to quickly set this to transferring files. And we're going to open up with a file viewer here. And I'm just going to copy it to the internal storage. So I'm going to paste this in. And you can see I have an old version of Magisk there. You can delete that if you want to. Just so you don't get confused and flash the old one. So we can see that at the bottom as copied to our device. And that's done. The next thing we want to do is open up a command prompt window, a PowerShell window, or a terminal window depending on which operating system you're on in the same directory as all our files here are located. Now to do it on Windows it's quite simple all you have to do is go up to the address bar here click on an empty space to select it and then type in the word CMD or the three letters hit enter and that'll open up a new command prompt window that's already changed to eAndroid or wherever your files have been downloaded to. Now, very handy if I do say so myself it will save you a bit of time when having to locate the directory and change to it, but it's quite simple, but this is just a shortcut. Alternatively, on Windows, you can hold shift and right click when nothing is selected in an empty space. And on Windows, I think eight or 10 and above, you'll be granted the option of a PowerShell window. And again, if you use PowerShell, you're going to have to type in the commands a little bit differently, but the syntax and the actual commands, they're quite similar, or exactly the same really. And the same goes to those on Linux or Mac OS using a terminal. There will be some slight changes to the way you type it, but here's a picture of what you need to do per operating system. So just take a look at that image. You can pause it if you want to, but once you're done looking at that and you know what to do, we can get started right away. So what we need to do is actually go back to our phone here to reboot it into the bootloader. So tap on restart and hold the volume down button when the screen freezes or turns black. Just keep holding it until your phone boots into the bootloader. It might take a few extra moments, but just keep holding it until you see that screen. So once the screen is on there, we can go ahead and go back to our phone here. Oh, sorry, our computer, I should say. And from there, we're going to detect or see if it's connected in fastboot or in the bootloader. So to do that, we're going to type in fastboot devices and hit enter. Now, this is going to return our device's serial number. There it is, and it's connected in fastboot. So the next thing we can do now is to flash the new bootloader. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader. Leave a space after that, and drag in the bootloader image, and press enter. Now once that's done, we can reboot our phone back into the bootloader, and to do that, we can use the volume buttons on our phone to Scroll down to reboot bootloader and then press the power button on the side here to select it. 
and our phone should reboot back into the bootloader. Now once that's done, we can go ahead and flash the radio image. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash radio. Leave a space after radio and drag in the radio image, like so. Okay, now once that's done, we can go ahead and reboot our phone into the bootloader once more. Of course, we can type in a fastboot command for that, so let's do that. We'll type in fastboot reboot dash bootloader. And like so, we're going to hit enter, and our phone's going to reboot uh, itself back into the bootloader. Now once that's done, we can go ahead and use the update command to flash all the images inside of the images zip file from our factory image. So it's going to automatically flash all those images, and all we need to do is to type in this simple command. We're going to type in fastboot double dash skip dash reboot and then type in the word update and then drag in the image zip file there and hit enter. Now this will check our device um, you know with the bootloader baseband versions and it's going to extract all the images that it needs and is going to flash them to our device and you can see how we added the skip reboot uh, flag to it and that just means that uh, our phone won't automatically reboot after flashing or using the update command which it does normally so here it's just going to extract the stuff and we're going to flash it so I'm going to fast forward this until it's finished and then we will be able to reroute our phone afterwards Okay, so right now we're finished here, we can go ahead and flash the latest version of TWRP along with that. So I'm going to type in fastboot flash recovery and leave a space after that. Then drag in our TWRP image that we downloaded earlier. This is, uh, you, you'll need to do this if you use the update command since it replaces our existing version of TWRP with a stock version that comes with the factory image, so we need to replace it once more with TWRP. Now there's one more thing before we restart, and that is for those who are on the boot loop of death. What you need to do now is flash the patched boot image rather than leave the stock boot image that we updated using the update command on our device. So you want to flash this to replace the stock boot image. So I'm going to type in the word fast boot, move my mouse out of the way, fast boot flash boot and then leave a space after that and drag in the four core patched boot image on top of that and then hit enter and that'll flash the appropriate boot image for you where we'll finish off the rest of the process by going into the recovery mode like so Oops. and then we're going to wait for our phone to boot into TWRP hopefully it is able to decrypt our data partition uh, but then after that we'll be able to flash Magisk and any other mods that may work on the August security update as well. Okay, it looks like it's done it for us. I guess this happens sometimes, it can remember our passwords, which is pretty neat. So yeah, if it does ask you for a password, it's just your screen lock password. If it doesn't, then that's also great. So once you're in TWRP, just tap on install and scroll down until you see the Magisk uh, zip file down here. Tap on it, swipe to confirm flash, and then just wait for our phone to flash Magisk like so. So it's going to do all its stuff here. Now that's done, we can tap on reboot system and then let our phone do its thing. Alrighty, so we're booted up now and we're just going to finish up our update here as seen. So let's just have a quick look at our current build number and we should be on the um, August security update. And yes, we are. H1, that's very good. And now let's just double check on our Magisk, I guess, status if it were rooted again. That's good, we are. And let's just have a look at the safety net status. But you can see we're passing that quite well so far. So what we're going to do now is, yeah, finish off by looking at CPU Z because we had uh, flashed the patched boot image that only enables the first four cores. So you can see that it's done that just here. We have three of the cores that are running sorry for the notification sounds but yeah we have three of the cores running and the rest have stopped and you can see that I guess the patches have worked thanks for watching guys if you have any other questions or queries 
feel free to leave it down in the comments below. And also, uh, feel free to visit me on Discord, on my Discord server. We can chat about things over there as well if you have any questions or just feel like asking something. And as always, happy flashing.